Today I'm going to try to teach you guys how to understand torque and horsepower in automotive engines in sort of a very elementary way just to make it simple. So what I've done is drawn several just rough graphs to give you an idea how various engines work and how their torque curves are and how that compares to horsepower. So my first graph has to do with a standard camshaft engine like the one you'd find in an ordinary car just meant to do ordinary driving. This is what I'll call the 3600 RPM maximum horsepower camshaft design engine. It has a very linear upward swing, a rounded curve, and then as the RPM start to pick up, it starts to lose torque and lose horsepower. So we have 7000 RPM here, and we'll imagine idle is 1000 RPM, and the height of the graft is foot-pounds of torque. So here we are starting from, say, an idle of around 1,000 RPM, and as we're accelerating the RPMs of the motor, torque is peaking at about 3,600 RPM, and if you speed the engine up faster than that, higher RPM, you lose some torque because of aerodynamic drag in the intake system, and you've lost some horsepower. This type of camshaft is best designed for low-speed driving, you know, under 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour and to give excellent fuel economy and good torque at low RPM during accelerating from takeoffs. If you have a race cam in your motor and an engine designed that it can rotate at a very high RPM without blowing up and flying apart, well then you have a, also a linear power curve but it doesn't really flatten out too much like this one does. It keeps going up and up but the disadvantage of this engine is low torque at low RPMs, which means low fuel economy at low RPMs, and poor acceleration at low RPMs, but very much usable horsepower in the high RPM range. This is like motorcycles and race cars. If you have a diesel engine, starting off from 1,000 RPM again, very quickly the torque curve rises, much quicker than the RPMs rise, and at a low RPM, like maybe only 18 or 1900 RPM, you've already hit maximum torque. And on a diesel, the maximum torque range is kind of narrow, and it's also kind of flat. Then, of course, diesel burns at a slower rate than gas, so as you increase your RPMs and getting to the red line of a diesel, there isn't enough time to burn all the fuel for them. And that causes a quick drop in horsepower. So diesels, you like to use the power within this short range of RPMs, and that's why diesel large trucks have so many gears. Now, if you have a turbo gas engine, for a while the power curve is very flat, not a whole lot of torque. Then suddenly turbo pressure starts to, ex ex starts to increase. Very quickly, you have strong torque until the wastegate opens up. When the wastegate opens up, it flattens your power curve, but maintains the torque through the whole RPM band. This gives you a lot of torque without aerodynamic drag because its air is forced in. So it's a wide power band, very usable, and good for fuel economy too. If you had a turbo gas engine without a wastegate connected to it, well then we have what's called an exponential power curve. Starting from 1000 RPM, turbo boost starts to increase, but if there's no limit to blow it off or regulate pressure, it starts to increase exponentially and the power curve is, and torque curve is almost straight up. Well, this can happen very soon, long before the red line of the engine. And the engine can destroy itself by uh, busted pistons and pre-detonation and stuff like that because there's just too much turbo boost. Now these graphs are meant to represent torque in an engine. Well, how you figure horsepower out of this is horsepower is a calculation of work an engine can do. Torque is how much twisting force the crankshaft has, measured in foot-pounds. That means, for example, if this pen was one foot long, and at this end, the engine might have, say, 200 pounds of force pushing down on a one-foot lever. Well, if you had 200 pounds of force pushing down here, let's say 2,500 RPM on this turbo engine with a wastegate, and then you had the same amount of torque here, pushing down at 5,000 RPM, well then you would have twice as much horsepower here as you would here, 
because the engine has the same amount of torque, but since it's spinning twice as fast, you're doing twice as much work. Now in a regular engine with just an ordinary camshaft, well, you have your torque increasing, and maybe when it gets to the maximum point, we'll call that 200 foot-pounds torque also. Well, then aerodynamic drag starts to kick in into the intake system, and as the RPMs increase, you start to lose torque. So somewhere along this line past the peak is the peak horsepower, where you have the most torque and the most RPMs, and that equals maximum horsepower. Diesel engines are very efficient at creating horsepower at low RPMs. One is the fuel weighs 20, over 20% 20 more than gasoline. It's a more dense fuel, so it has more energy per liter. Two, the fuel burns at a slower rate. Three, the fuel creates its torque curve a lot earlier on the RPM scale. So your engine isn't spinning that fast, and it's producing as much torque or more torque than a similar sized gasoline engine but at a much lower RPM, so you'll be able to use your power at a lower RPM, but have excellent torque, so that's giving you excellent fuel economy. A race cam, of course, is horrible for fuel economy because it has hardly any torque. Say, for example, here, where it would have 4,500 RPM. Its cam and intake system isn't even working efficiently until the RPMs usually get over 4,000 to 5,000 RPM, and that, of course, is using a lot of fuel just to get somewhat more torque. Which, of course, is more horsepower. But for racers, often fuel consumption doesn't matter. So this sort of all explains why diesels can have so much more torque than a gasoline engine, but not actually have more horsepower. It's because you're not quite doing as much work, because the torque all happens at a much lower RPM. Turbo engines have the most usable flat torque curve, which maintains full torque throughout the upper RPM band. And a standard camshaft gasoline engine always has a torque curve which comes on fairly early so that you can use your torque during in a low RPM where you're doing most of your normal city driving and highway driving, which gives you the excellent fuel economy. So if you want the best all-around engine for power, you want to design an engine that has an inductive system, whether that be supercharged or turbocharged or ram air or anything like that, that produces a long, broad, flat torque curve so that when you're doing, say, 2,000 or 3,000 RPM and you're doing, say, 6,000 or more RPM, you still haven't lost any torque. You've still got it all there, so your horsepower can quickly double in just a couple thousand RPM. Now the only difference on this graph, if it was supercharged instead of turbocharged, is the power curve would come on much quicker and sooner because there would be no turbo lag because a supercharger is mechanically driven. The only disadvantage of supercharging is that it actually takes some of the horsepower from the engine to drive the supercharger. And even though it's giving you a lot more horsepower, you're actually losing some to drive it. The turbo engine doesn't do that, it just uses wasted exhaust gases and turns them into free energy. So I hope all you younger viewers out there now have sort of at least a basic understanding of engines and their torque and their horsepower outputs.